Hello everyone, I hope you are all well by the grace of God Almighty. Thank you for watching Nergia Cartoons. Today's video is very important, because many people have requested through email that I make a video on this topic. So, I decided to create a video on this topic today to help you all. Today's episode is about how fear and anxiety, particularly panic attacks, affect us. Many people in our society suffer from this issue, where they are constantly troubled by fear, which leads to panic attacks. This problem has become so severe for some that it is difficult for them to live their lives. I know many people who have this problem, and they are very distressed and consult doctors regularly. And there is one thing I forgot to mention, but I thought I should let you know that this episode was sent to us via email and it is actually a story of a doctor. What happened to her, the fear and anxiety she experienced, we will describe all the details in today's episode. I want to emphasize that this problem has become so common that it can affect anyone, regardless of who they are. To illustrate this, the entire script of this episode is based on the life story of a doctor. In today's video, we will explain how we can control these issues. But before we start the video, let's see what the Bible tells us about this topic. Isaiah 41, 10, So do not fear, for I am with you. Do not be dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you and help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. 2 Timothy 1, 7, For the Spirit God gave us does not make us timid, but gives us power, love and self-discipline. Psalm 34, 4, I sought the Lord, and He answered me. He delivered me from all my fears. Matthew 6, 34, Therefore do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will worry about itself. Each day has enough trouble of its own. Now let's start this video and watch it together see what happened in this. I'm here to ask you who was on duty last Tuesday evening. Was it you or Ruby? It was me on duty. Why? Is everything alright? Tell me. Alright. If it was you, then there was a pregnant patient named Layla who came for a checkup. Did you examine her and give her medicine? Yes, of course, I was on duty. I did her checkup and gave her the medicine. Why? Is everything okay? Is there something I should know? No, there's nothing wrong. I just wanted to confirm who was on duty and gave the pregnant woman the medicine. Professor asked me to find out. Please don't worry me. I'm asking you to tell me what's going on. I feel like you're hiding something from me. There's nothing else. I just wanted to know who was on duty at that time. Even after insisting, you're not telling me what's going on. Fine, I won't force you. I know how you are. You spread curiosity about who was on duty, but don't complete the story. I'm not spreading curiosity. I just asked you, and you answered. Relax and do your work. Okay, I understand. I'll relax and continue my work. Why did she come to ask me? What could have happened? What could the issue be? I gave that pregnant woman the proper medicines, because she was four months pregnant. After her checkup, I recommended the appropriate medicine. Could there have been a problem? Could something have gone wrong? She mentioned that the professor asked her to find out which doctor was on duty that day and check the woman named Layla. I don't know why, but I'm feeling worried. Did I make a mistake? Did I give her the wrong medicine? I don't know what happened. Maybe I'm getting depressed thinking about what could happen if there was a problem. How will I face it? No, no, this can't be right. I am a professional doctor. How could I possibly give the wrong medicine? I conducted a proper checkup and prescribed the exact medicine needed after the examination. It might just be my worry or misunderstanding. Perhaps the professor is just asking to update the duty chart. But if there was a mistake on my part, what would happen? No, no, I can't have made a mistake. I always work very professionally. Mom, next week there's a school trip, and I need to inform you that my teacher gave me some documents. They need your and daddy's signatures. It's a kind of permission letter. Each student participating in the trip needs to get their parents to sign these documents. Could you please sign them, and I'll get daddy's signature too? Sure, my son, why not? Bring the papers, and I'll sign them. 
It's just a school trip. All your friends will be with you, and you'll have a great time. Okay, I'll bring the documents. Thanks, Mom. I'll have a lot of fun there. All my friends will be with me, we'll visit many places, and I'll take lots of pictures. Yes, son definitely go. Enjoying and having fun is very important in life. Now that you've grown up and responsible, if you need anything, just let me know. No, I shouldn't allow him to go. He's still a small kid, and if something happens to him, there are many beaches and wild forests, I can't risk his safety. He's my only son. I can't imagine living without him if something goes wrong. I made a mistake agreeing to let him go on the trip. He's not mature enough yet. I should stop him and tell him he can't go on the trip without parental supervision. If he wants to go somewhere, he can come with us instead. If he goes, it's not a big issue. He's not small kid that I need to restrict him from going everywhere. He's grown up and understands a lot about what's good and bad. If I keep him isolated, it will hinder his growth. Enjoyment and fun are very important for children. Otherwise, they could become isolated. I can't bear the thought of something happening to my child. I don't know why I'm being so double-minded. First, I thought I shouldn't let my son go, and now I'm thinking that if he does go, it could be a good thing. But then another thought comes to mind, what if the trip involves the school bus, and all the kids are acting up? What if something happens to my child? What if someone picks him up and throws him outside? No, no, I shouldn't think this way. I shouldn't let these thoughts trouble me. I love my son so much, and I don't think anyone would intentionally harm him. But since I won't be there, I'm worried about what might happen. What if I get a call from the principal saying my child fell off the bus while the kids were misbehaving? What should I do? I was thinking about our son's trip next week. Did he come to you for permission? Yes, he came to me for permission, and I gave it to him. Kids need these sources of enjoyment. It helps them stay healthy and mentally fresh. Why do you have a problem with it? Is there something else troubling you? Any panic attacks? Do you think I'm crazy? Why would I have an attack? I was just thinking about discussing this with you. Okay, fine. I was just joking. Tell me what's on your mind. I was worried that since the trip will be on a school bus, and kids can be irresponsible, what if our son gets hurt or falls off the bus because they were misbehaving? What's the problem? How many times have I told you not to overthink? I don't understand why you always have these fears. Your mind is constantly filled with worries. I'm a mother, and naturally, I worry a lot about my child. I'm just discussing with you that this thought crossed my mind, and I've decided that we shouldn't send our son on the school trip. Catherine, don't overthink this. Don't demotivate him. He's still young, and these are his play and adventure days. If you restrict him too much, he might become just as anxious and unsure as you are. William, don't keep telling me the same thing. As a mother, I'm very concerned about my child. I love him deeply and can't imagine being without him. I don't understand why you don't get that. I'm surprised. You're a doctor, and you know how to motivate patients, but you always have panic attacks yourself. And you still can't seem to decide what you should or shouldn't say. Talking to you seems pointless, because you always have an answer for everything. I've decided that my son won't go on the school trip. Instead, I will take him out myself to ensure he doesn't miss out on fun. Everything you're doing is wrong. You need to take care of yourself first. If you keep thinking negatively, those thoughts might start affecting your real life. Always try to think positively so that good things can happen. Our hospital building is so old. I don't understand why they don't repair it. If the ceiling falls on me, I would definitely die. There is no chance of survival. My mind is always filled with useless thoughts. I'm not alone in this hospital. There are many people here. 
I hope I'll eventually be free of these negative thoughts. But another question comes to my mind, if the ceiling really does collapse, it will be very difficult for me to survive. However, will I at least feel that it's about to fall so I can run out through the front door and save myself? The decision I've made is absolutely correct. I can't compromise on my son. He is more precious to me than my own life, and I love him deeply. My husband can't understand this. I can't live without my son. It was the right choice to stop him from going on the trip. When the weekend comes, I will take him out myself so that he can enjoy and not feel left out. Doctor, Professor has called you to his cabin. He wants to meet you. Okay, I'm coming. Please hurry. He mentioned that you need to be called quickly. I'm here to let you know. All right, I've heard you. I'll be there in two minutes. You can go now. This is exactly what I was worried about. My friend was asking me about who was on duty that day when the pregnant woman came in, and now the doctor is calling me. I feel like there is a major complaint against me. I don't know what will happen if I get fired. How will I survive? My husband's income isn't very good. The professor will probably give me a hard time and scowl me a lot. What have I gotten myself into? Did I really make a mistake with the medication? I'm being so foolish, thinking about all this before even meeting the professor. I should at least hear what he has to say. Yes, professor, you called me. Is everything all right? Catherine, I wanted to discuss something with you, which is why I called you. Yes, please let me know what you need to discuss. I wanted to inform you that starting next month, we're changing the duty schedule. You will need to prepare the new duty roster and add some specific things. I wanted to guide you through this, so that's why I called you. Thank you for letting me know. I'll make sure to handle it. You may go back to your room now. Sir, I wanted to ask you something. If you have time, could I discuss it with you? Yes, of course. I'm not busy, so feel free to ask whatever you need. Sir, my colleague mentioned that you were inquiring about a patient named Layla, who was pregnant, and who checked by me last week. I wanted to clarify this with you. Actually she's my friend's wife, and my friend called me saying that her wife spoke highly of the treatment she received. So I asked your colleague which doctor was on duty that day. My friend praised the treatment a lot, which is why I'm asking. I was just checking to see who was on duty. My friend's feedback was very positive, and I wanted to confirm the details. Is everything alright? Why are you asking? Did someone say something to you? Let me know if there's an issue. No, sir, I was just asking for information. Alright, I'll go back to my room now. I worried so much for no reason. There was nothing significant to be concerned about. I was thinking that maybe I did something wrong for the professor to inquire about me. But it turns out, it was a minor thing. The professor was just confirming that the patient I treated was a friend's wife and that the friend was very pleased with the treatment. I really overthought everything and got caught up in my own worries. Who has moved into the vacant house in front of ours? I saw some unloading of items when I was coming back from the office. Yes, it looks like new tenants have moved in. I also saw the unloading this morning. I didn't think to ask. We can introduce ourselves later. I was just thinking if you might know them, which is why I asked. Is there a problem? If there's anything, let me know. No, no problem. I was just asking. Who is that man? He was looking at me when I was coming back from the office. I didn't think it was worth discussing with my husband. The next day, when I was heading to the office, he was still standing outside his house, watching me. I wonder why he is staring at me. I don't trust this man. There's something unsettling about him. I don't like the way he keeps looking at me. What could be his intention behind staring at me continuously? 
Could he be a bad person? No, it's probably just my suspicion. They're new in the neighborhood, so I shouldn't jump to conclusions. Is he on some mission? Could he be a kidnapper or a thief, planning to monitor the area and then commit a crime? Are they watching my son or planning to harm my husband? Why am I thinking so negatively? I need to stay positive, as I promised myself. Why are these fears clouding my mind? If what I'm thinking is true, I won't tolerate this man. How dare he think badly of my family? Maybe he doesn't know me, but I am very protective and won't tolerate anyone having a negative attitude towards my family. I love my husband and son dearly and won't let him succeed in any harmful plans. Dear viewers, this episode illustrates how fear can lead to panic attacks and self-questioning. I want to emphasize that this situation is not just confined to one's mind, but can also affect one's daily life, including physical health. Constant fear can lead to anxiety and make individuals live in a state of perpetual worry about what might go wrong. People who are caught in this cycle create problems for themselves by staying trapped in their fears. Many individuals in our society, among family, friends, and neighbors, experience similar issues and struggle with these panic attacks. Living with such fears and anxieties makes life extremely challenging. People who suffer from these issues often start to assume the worst and are constantly troubled. If you know someone dealing with depression or similar struggles, please help them understand that no power is greater than the strength of God. Encourage them to strengthen their connection with God to alleviate their fears and anxiety. I've seen many individuals harmed by overthinking, which deteriorates their health. Before we begin the next episode, Let's see what guidance we can find from God on this matter. Isaiah 41, 10 So do not fear, for I am with you. Do not be dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you and help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. Explanation, do not fear, this verse offers reassurance that God is always present and supportive. Strength and help, God promises to provide strength and assistance, alleviating fear by reinforcing his protection and support. 1 Peter 5, 7 Cast all your anxiety on him because he cares for you. Explanation, cast your anxiety. Believers are encouraged to relinquish their worries to God. God's care, the assurance that God cares for his people provides comfort and a reason to trust him with their concerns. Romans 8 28 And we know that in all things God works for the good of those who love him, who have been called according to his purpose. Explanation, God works for good. This verse reassures believers that despite uncertainties, God is working towards their good. Purpose and assurance, knowing that God has a purpose and is working for their benefit helps believers avoid getting trapped in negative overthinking. Psalm 34, 4 I sought the Lord, and he answered me. He delivered me from all my fears. Explanation, seeking the Lord, the act of seeking God is met with his response and deliverance. Deliverance from fear. This passage highlights God's ability to free individuals from their fierce thrug. His intervention. Colossians 3, 2 Set your minds on things that are above, not on things that are on earth. Explanation. Minds on higher things. Believers are encouraged to focus on spiritual matters and eternal truths rather than being preoccupied with earthly concerns. Perspective shift. By shifting focus, one can reduce anxiety on overthinking related to temporal issues. Now let's see what happened next. He is watching me now, and he's looking at me with a lot of anger. It seems like what I was thinking might actually be true. Why are you so anxious? If there's something wrong, tell me. A family has shifted in the house in front of ours, and they seem like very odd people. For the past two days, I've observed an old man standing outside their house, constantly watching our house and me. It's causing me a lot of distress. I don't understand what's wrong with you. Why do you view everyone with such suspicion? And why do you start feeling anxious and fearful? Please stop thinking like this. There's nothing as you're imagining. No, I'm thinking correctly. You always misunderstand what I'm saying. What I'm saying is right. You just got back from the office. Please go and rest. Yes, it's better for me to go and rest rather than debating with you. I don't know what's happened to my wife. I'm getting very worried because of her. She's always tense and overthinking, 
which makes her anxious. I can't bear to see her like this. I'm praying to God for the best for her. I'll also go to the house across the street and check if there's any issue. I'll ask them why they keep staring. Whatever the problem is, it will become clear. First, I'll pray to God. O oh Lord, I come before you with a heavy heart, seeking your divine intervention and guidance for my beloved wife. Lord, you know the struggles and anxieties that she is facing right now. I lift her up to you, asking for your comforting presence and peace to surround her. Please, God, grant her strength and clarity of mind. Help her to find solace in your love and to trust in your plan for her life. May she feel your hand guiding her through her worries and fears, and may she experience your peace that surpasses all understanding. Lord, I pray that you remove the fears and anxieties that have taken hold of her heart. Replace them with your reassurance and the knowledge that she is never alone, for you are always with her. Help her to find comfort in your promises and to rest in the certainty of your care and protection. I also ask that you grant me the wisdom to support her in the best way possible. Show me how to be a source of encouragement and strength, and help me to communicate my love and support clearly. Give me the patience and understanding to be a comforting presence in her life. If there are any external factors causing her distress, I pray that you reveal them and provide us with the courage to address them. Protect her from any harm and ensure that any issues are resolved peacefully and swiftly. I trust in your grace and mercy, Lord, and I place my wife in your hands. I ask for your blessings on our marriage and for your continued guidance as we navigate these challenges together. Strengthen our bond and help us to grow closer to you and to each other. Thank you, God, for hearing my prayer and for your endless love and care. I am confident that you are working in our lives and that your plan is always for our good. In Jesus' name, I pray, Amen. I hope you're well and I haven't caused you any trouble. I wanted to check in since I've noticed that you've recently moved in and might have been busy with the shifting process. No, no, you haven't troubled us at all. We've just been very occupied with moving our things. I understand. I was just concerned because my wife mentioned that for the past two to three days, she has seen an elderly man standing in front of our house wearing black glasses. He seems to be continuously watching our house and her. I came to ask if there is any issue that I should be aware of. You might be referring to my father. He is elderly and has poor eyesight. He often stands by the gate to enjoy the fresh air because he gets bored inside the house. He can't see very well, so there's no way he's observing your wife or your home. It seems like there's been a misunderstanding. Please don't worry. If his presence is causing any discomfort, I'll make sure he stays indoors or doesn't stand by the gate anymore. I wasn't aware of that. Thank you for clarifying. I just wanted to make sure there was no misunderstanding. Absolutely, there's no issue at all. It's just his way of spending time. Thank you for bringing it up, and I apologize if there was any confusion. It's so embarrassing that I accused his father of watching my wife, when the truth is, he can't even see well. All this anxiety and fear are due to my wife's worries. Today, I made a fuss about something that wasn't even true. I feel ashamed of myself. What must he think of me now? I have cleared everything. There's nothing like what you thought. I feel very ashamed. His father can't even see, so why would he be looking at you or our house? Please, remove this fear and anxiety from your mind and get closer to God. I feel ashamed that you went to their house to inquire. I only wanted to share my concern with you. I was worried seeing you distressed, so I went to ask. Now, please let it go. There's no power greater than God's. Focus on getting closer to Him, read His words to free yourself from this illness, or you'll spend your whole life in depression. Yes, you're right. I admit my mistake and will ask God for forgiveness. I don't know how many people I may have wronged due to my overthinking, and now I realize it was my fault. Dear God, I come to you with a humble heart, seeking your guidance and forgiveness. I have been overwhelmed by fear and anxiety, allowing my thoughts to lead me astray and cause distress not only to myself but to those I love. 
I ask for your mercy and help in overcoming these fears that have taken hold of my mind. Please grant me clarity and peace, and help me to trust in your wisdom and plan for my life. Remove the doubts and worries that cloud my judgment and fill me with your calming presence. Forgive me for any harm I may have caused to others due to my overthinking. Help me to learn from my mistakes and to approach every situation with faith and understanding. Strengthen my relationship with you, so I may find comfort and assurance in your promises. Guide me to be a source of love and support for my family, and help me to rely on your strength rather than my own fears. Thank you for your endless grace and for walking with me through every trial. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. As you have seen in this episode, I hope you appreciated the hard work and effort put into it. People like this can be found in every society. Instead of making fun of them or taking advantage of their condition, please offer them counseling and support. Help them understand how to overcome their anxiety so they can also lead a happy and fulfilling life, just like you. Thank you for watching Nergia Cartoons. May God bless you all. Amen. Take care everyone. Bye.